don't be confined to the outcome of your environment. Now, because with what is happening around us, people are already living in fear. But we must understand that the call, uh, that our new bet is supernatural. Our new bet is supernatural. To be saved is supernatural. The having the Holy Spirit is supernatural. So the believer is not a byproduct of his environment. The believer is actually supernatural by nature. The believer understands spiritual things. Let me start tonight by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. Now this was the prophecy of Isaiah. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11. Now the things in the Old Testament that was a struggle to, to them, the Bible said we know them now. Because being saved has happened. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Next verse. Now, because he's relating with us now as spirit beings. He said, now we have not received the spirit of what? The world. What have we received? But the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Next verse. So being saved, we have received his spirit. Which things also we speak, not in the words which must wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Ghost teach it. So what do we do? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So the believer is spiritual in every sense of it. And so being born again, the Bible said that what I had not seen, yet had not heard, Isaiah prophesied this in Isaiah 65. He said, but today we have those things. It means that we are saved. To be saved was what they prophesied about, but today is a reality to us. And he said, because of the working of the Spirit. Now, it got to the extent that we, what has happened to us, we compare spiritual things with spiritual things. What that means is that the outcome of our environment no longer controls us. Am I communicating? The outcome of our environment. We should not say it's happening to everybody. No, that is happening to everybody. We can live above those things. The reason is we are not called to compare natural things with natural things. We are called to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. Can I say that again? Our call is a compare. We are to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. So we wouldn't evaluate our lives based on the things happening in our environment. We don't judge our lives based on the things happening in our environment. So God is calling us to reason supernaturally. So when I see things going wrong around me, I should not put myself up as part of that system. All I need to do is to remind myself of the fact that I am supernatural, I am spiritual, and I shouldn't live my life based on the outcome of my environment. So it means if there is an outbreak of pandemic here or epidemic, we are not supposed to say, oh, there is an outbreak. I will soon, I will soon be a part of it. No. You must reason supernaturally. That as much as we have things in the natural, we have things in the supernatural that, that, that is superior to the natural. Am I communicating? Now, that's exactly what I want us to see tonight. The fact that we have been called to reason supernaturally. We have been called to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The reason is that is how we are made. By default, that is who we are. He said, which things also we speak. So, these things are expressed in our words. When you hear people say, wow, look at the things that are going on. We don't know where we are going to. But look at how Paul put it. He said, which things we speak. So, spiritual things are expressed with our mouth. He said, not in the world which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. And what do we do? We compare spiritual things with spiritual now, so it means we are not limited to the senses. We are not limited to the natural. We are not limited to our environment. So we can live above our environment. On Sunday, I said, the man of God found in 
himself in the UK and the cold was so much. And then he remembered that, look, he's not called to reason from the natural. He said, Lord, I live above this environment. He's all of a sudden, he began to feel heat on his inside. He said, Pastor, why are you teaching like this? I'm teaching like this because believers are beginning to reason from the natural point of view. But that is not our calling. Our calling is to reason from the spiritual point of view. Help me say, I reason from the supernatural. Now look at the next verse because this forms the, fun, uh, the fulcrum of what I'll be teaching today. The next verse is above the natural man. Receive it, not the things of the spirit. Why? Are you saying the natural man does not learn to reason from the supernatural. The natural man is confined to the natural. So his success is in the natural. His defeat is in the natural. Because all he knows is the natural. He thinks from the senses. What his eyes can see. What he can feel. What he can hear. The things people tell him. His environment. His, his, the, the, his environment determines his outcome. But for us, it, no, he said, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. He said, neither can he know them. Because they are what? Spiritually designed. And that is who you are. You are not trying to be spiritual. You are spiritual. Everybody say that with me. I'm not trying to be spiritual. I am spiritual. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. I'll quickly explain that. And we'll get into what we have for tonight. Reasoning supernaturally. And God wants us to begin to think that way. You are doing business. You can reason supernaturally. In that your environment you find yourself. When men are talking about defeat. You can reason from the supernatural. He said, but you are not in the flesh. Everybody read that with me. Want to go? But ye are not in the flesh. What he's saying is that you are not in the natural. You may be in the physical like this, but you are not ruled by the natural. He said, but you are not in the flesh. But where are you? But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, where is the spirit of God? Come on, where is the spirit of God? Come on, say it for the last time. Where is the spirit of God? Now, if the spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That is to say, if a man is not saved, he cannot lay claim to the fact that he has the spirit of Christ. So being saved is having the spirit of Christ. So what we are trying to say, we have the spirit. So the believer is not trying to be in the spirit. The believer is in the spirit. Can we do that together? Say, I am not trying to be in the spirit. I was born in the spirit. You know, he said to Nicodemus, that, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. So by my new birth, I was born spirit. I am called to reason supernaturally. So that takes me to our teaching tonight. I did all of this to help you understand where we are going to tonight. And maybe I will add one scripture more to it. If you read verse 14 of Romans chapter 8, you will now see how that he explained the fact that we are in the spirit. And verse 14, help me with verse 14. Look at how he explained verse 14. He said, for as many as are led by the spirit. Now, to be led by the spirit is to be carried from the flesh. Is to be brought into Christ. That you have come into Christ, you were led from the flesh to the spirit. They are the sons of God. What that means is, by the new birth, you are spirit and you are a son of God. So you are not trying to be a spirit. You are not doing five steps to walk in the spirit. You are a spirit. Again, let me put it this way. In John chapter 10. I think we did this one day. I can't remember when. John chapter 10. Maybe verse 4. You know, people are still trying to do things. Four, 3 and 4. John 10, 3 and 4. This is what some people are still trying to do. Oh, I want to learn how to hear from God. No, that is not what the Bible told us to do. Because we are in the spirit. You don't learn it. It's your nature. He said, to him the potter openeth, and the sheep hear. Do the sheep learn his voice or they hear his voice? Or they don't learn it. And he collect his own sheep by name and leaded them out. Next verse, verse 4. And when he put forth his sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they learn his voice. 
for they practice his voice. So say with me, I know the, the voice of my father. I am in the spirit. My call is to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. So what that means is that I'm called to reason supernaturally. Pastor, why are you doing this teaching? You see, believers soon forget who they are because of what is happening around them. When there are challenges around some believers, they forget soon who they are. So, this is a call that irrespective of what is happening around us, we are called to reason supernaturally. We are not called to reason from the natural point of view. We are not trying to evaluate our lives based on the outcome of our environment. No, our environment should not give us an identity. We give the environment our identity. We tell the environment the outcome of our life. So the environment does not rule us, we rule the environment. Am I communicating? Say, the environment does not rule us, we rule our environment. So can we do it like this? Say, to, I, I refuse to die. No, because you are, you see, the man called Paul, he said, I have finished my work. Now, a man who said he has finished his work has not died. But in modern day Christianity, when people die, say he has finished his work. People who have finished their work, they announce it before they leave. You didn't hear what I just said. People who have finished their work, they announce it before they leave. Okay, look at Peter. If you read Peter, sorry, this is just by the way. Peter said, I'm ready to be offered. Oh, do you want me to show you that? Do you, do you need, do you care about that? Do you care about it? Okay, second Peter, one, quickly, because it's not part of my note, so that I can see catch up. You know, we are working with time. Second Peter, you know, I don't want to leave a statement hanging, so people don't get confused. Praise God. All right, let's do something. Second Peter. Oosh. Okay, chapter 1. Let's read from verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. We'll read down. So I want you to follow Peter. Peter said, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Next verse. Please follow me. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, that's this body, to stir you up by putting you in what? Remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle. He knew it. He knew his work was over. In Nigeria and in Africa, it is when people die, when they have died and they are gone, those of us who are alive will say that he has finished his work. Life is a choice we make. You hear the doctor say that man fought hard to live. So it means to live is within the purview of man. Can I say that again? It's within the strength and our ability. There are people who have been in coma for two years and they see come out of it. They fight. There are people who say no. No, look at it. He said, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus had what? Come on, follow scripture. So, he didn't just go. Then people started announcing. He announced it. If you read 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm sure from verse 7. I'm sure from verse 7. 2 Timothy. Okay, let me read it. Moreover, please, sorry, sorry. Leave it there. who will come here because I don't want to make a loose end statement. Leave it. Okay. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my word, to have these things always he knew he was going. He, he said, after his disease. Next word. Next verse. Quickly. For we have not followed cunningly devised fable, where we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus, but we are eyewitnesses of what? His majesty. So he was going to explain a truth to them. But permit me to say that I'm not, on, I'm not explaining the truth. I just made a statement and I felt we should explain it. Second Timothy 4 verse 7 Look at the case of Paul. So Paul didn't just go. So I'm saying this to say you will not live suddenly. That amen lacks vitamin D. I say you will not live suddenly. Oh. You are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. I say I'm not going anywhere. So we must reason supernaturally. Don't say it happened to so and so person. You reason from the scripture. From this. Look at this. Look at Paul. Everybody look up. He said, I have fought a good fight. 
I have finished my course. Who said it? Is it after his disease people said it or he said it when he had not died? He said it like Peter. I have finished my course. I have kept the message. Look at the next verse. He said, Henceforth there is laid up for me what? A crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that have that love his word. Appearing. Has he died before he made his statement? Why would you be saying, ah, ah, eh, that man just died. He has finished his work. No. You fight to remain here. You fight to remain here. And that's why we are teaching on reasoning supernaturally. You fight to remain here. Come on. I say, I remain here. So, so let's do teaching now. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. I want to teach you how to fight. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. My son, this is how to fight. Attend to my word. That is, give attention to my word. Incline your ears unto my sayings. So, as you attend to the word, let your ears be the instrument you use. Look at the next verse. Let them not depart from your eyes. So, how do you keep God's word in your eyes? It means you visualize it. It means you see it. Can I, can I say that again? Incline your ear means use your mouth to feed your heart with the word of God. So, as you hear God's word, keep speaking it with your mouth. Your maturity and immaturity is known by what comes out of your mouth. Out of the mouth proceed whether evil thought or good thought. So, the content of a man is known in his words. Am I communicating? The content of a man is known in his world. Maturity is not what you write on the face of anybody. Maturity is what you see via the words of a man. So he said, incline your ears unto my word. Let them not depart out of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So you give attention to God's word. You let your ear go for it. He said, do not let it depart from your eyes. Visualize God's word. Visualize. See yourself living long. What did I say? See yourself living long. See your body not playing host to sickness. See pain disappearing from your body. Ah. See you being, not being the one people pity. Never you have a vision of you seeing yourself in the hospital. There are people, they just lie down. And what they are thinking of is, what if I'm in the hospital? Where will I have money to pay for my bill? What if I die now? What That's a wrong one. The Bible says, use your mouth to put the word of God in the midst of your heart. So the first thing, you must hear it and then see it. Can I say that again? You hear God's word and then you see it. Then you speak it, then it is retained in your heart. And I need to prophesy over you. You are not living in a hurry. You didn't hear what I said. We need to reason supernaturally. What kills men actually is what they have stored up in their mind. Men die as a result of what they have stuffed their mind with. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of what? Stronghold. Casting down imagination. What men have piled up in their mind. And every thought will bring it to the obedience of Christ. In the same vein, he said, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst. No man can keep God's word for you than you. Only you can keep God's word. And so you can fight through to remain here. Can I shock you? The Paul that I talked about, do you know in Acts chapter 17, if I am not mistaken, this same Paul was stoned. And while he was stoned, they, they supposed he was dead. But the Bible said the brethren surrounded him. Paul stood up and trekked another 43 miles to preach in another city. Stephen was stoned. He said, into thy hand I commit my spirit. And he went. To live or to die is within the, your power. Can I say that again? <laughs> say, I'm not ready to go yet. You know why I'm saying this? I want you to keep it in the midst of your heart. Never you see yourself dying of pains. Never you see yourself dying of sickness. Look at why he said so. Next verse. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Why did he say so? 
for they are life. So life is not in your drugs. We are not against drugs. Life is not in your syringe. We are not against your syringe. But life is in my son. Attend to my word. Ooh, am I communicating? See, that same word of God can vitalize your body. The same word of God can vitalize your body. Those dead cells, those things that refuse to function can function as a result of the word of God. The reason is you are a byproduct of God's word. It's a being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible. The word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So the the seed of your bed is an incorruptible seed. And that same seed is at work in your body. Am I speaking to somebody? So we must start reasoning supernaturally. A little thing happened in our environment. You need to hear the confessions of believers. Oh, we don't know where we are going to. Oh, things are going bad. Oh, maybe there will soon be war. Let's have plan B, plan C, plan D. No! The Bible says, where sin doth abound. Dear grace much more abound. The tougher the situation the better for grace. Jesus already told us in this world there will be tribulation. It's a bee of good cheer. How come people have forgotten that word? They have forgotten that word because they didn't incline their ears to his saying. They didn't keep it in the midst of their heart. They were not saying it. How do I keep it in the midst of my heart? I keep saying it. I keep speaking God's word over myself. I keep declaring what the word of God says. Because God's word is said for their life unto them that find it. Look at it. And what? Hurt. Not just to their flesh. To all their flesh. The word of God works on your tissue. The word of God works on your organ. The word of God works on your joint. The word of God works on your marrow. The word of God works on your eyes. The word of God works on the cells of your body. The word of God works in your bloodstream. Works in your womb. Works in every part of you. Why? Thy word, they are life unto them that find them. Take note. The process of finding has been explained to us. You incline, you hear it, you don't let it depart from your eyes, you keep it in the midst. That's the process of finding. Once you find it, they become life to you and head to all your flesh. So, when I see believers, they suffer. Pastor, you don't know what is killing people now. What kills people, my work is to compare spiritual things with spiritual. I'm not called to compare physical things or spiritual things with physical. Am I communicating? It's time we start speaking God's word. So give me two different renderings. We are starting from verse 20 again. Please don't be in a hurry. It's a teaching class. God's word. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my word. Why did he say so? He said, don't lose sight of them. And that's the challenge. When challenges come around us in our environment, we lose sight of God's word. Instead of remembering the word of God. You know why the word of God, you should not lose sight of it? John 6, 63, don't go there. He said, the words I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and life. He said, pastor, my case is a spiritual case. That is why you need the word of God. It's spirit. He said, no, pastor, the body, the pain I have in my body is an attack. It's a spiritual attack. There is a word that can rest the spirit. It is called the word of God. Am I communicating? He said, Pastor, you don't know. I matched poison. They planted something on the ground. And it, it was a, a, an arrow. Thank God. He said, don't lose sight of my word. The reason he said, don't lose sight. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirits. And what again? They are life. And that's what the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, David, uh, sorry, Solomon is confirming here. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Question. Why the heart? Because out of the heart are the issues of life. Your life revolves around what you have put in your heart. It's the heart of the heart flows the issues of life. It's not what a man eats inside that defies a man. It is what comes out of the mouth. Because what comes out of a man will be a byproduct of what he has stored in his heart. Church, am I communicating? We need to make up our mind to start reasoning supernaturally. 
We allow our environment to keep us in the cocoon. You see, believers talk as though, you know, when it comes to uh, everything, everything being rosy, you hear, you hear them sing songs that I'm not of this world. I'm seated with him in the heavenly, in Christ, in this, in this. But for a little challenge, your words betray you. Your words shows that the word of God has not penetrated deep into your heart. Next verse. Hallelujah. I can't be sick. You didn't hear me? I said I cannot be sick. Sickness cannot force me out of this world. I fight through. I say sickness cannot force me out of this world. I will not be confined because of sickness. Hallelujah. For they bring life to those who find them. So what about those who don't find them? Death is knocking at their door. And healing to their whole body. No part of your body escapes the word of God. Therefore I stand tonight. Every form of sickness that is not of God traceable to your body dies tonight. Am I speaking to somebody? I need you to be angry. We need to reason supernaturally. Stop reasoning from this local plane. Your environment giving you case. You keep complaining, muttering words. I don't know how this thing is doing me. You know, this thing is worrying me. I don't even know how it's doing me. Right now, it has moved from my leg. It's now on my chest. It has moved from my chest. It's now in my heart. You only complain. You have not spoken the truth. You have not spoken word. You are you were not called to report this situation. You know, Pastor Barry taught us here how that the spies 12 went out to spy the land. The Bible said two came with a good report. Ten came with an evil report. So what is a good report? A good report is the report that is in sync with the word of God. That lines up with the word of God. So what is an evil report? An evil report is a report that negates what God has spoken. So when you say, it's my hand, it has moved to my leg, that is not the report of God's word. The report of God's word is that sickness cannot dwell in this body. This body is the temple of... Why not speak your victory instead of talking about your defeat? And we are so prone to talking about the defeat, the pain. Nobody asks you anywhere to talk about pain. You are asked to speak what the word of God says. That's what it says. If God's word is healing to all your body, nobody can do it for you. Don't let it depart from your eyes. And that is why before open confrontation comes, start practicing God's word. How do you practice it? Sickness cannot get to this body. I can't be sick. My legs are strong. My bones are strong. My joints are strong. My liver functions well. My kidney functions well. My heart functions well. Whatever they call it, cardiac arrest, I arrest it ahead of time. My heart palpitates. The palpitation of my heart is normal. My eyes, I see well. No evil come nigh me. I scat it because when you find it, you keep it deep in the midst of your heart. So even when the pain comes, you don't confess the pain, you confess the word. Ken Hagen, Pa Hagen said, he said, any time I feel symptoms in my body, I double up my study life, I double up my prayer life. So what does it mean? I don't want the symptom to be higher than the word of God. It means the word of God will be louder than the symptoms in my body. So you must make the word of God louder than the voice of the pain. Say that with me. Say, I make God's word louder than the pain, than the environment. Instead of talking about that situation, speak God's word at that point. Can I hear an amen from someone? Give me another rendition. Are you seeing what the Bible said? God's word, the same way you take Nova Queen or Nova Jean, whatever they call it, they tell you 224 or 222. And you are so, do you know we are very religious when it comes to drugs? They say, give me my money on. Give me my evening on. If I miss it, sometimes the doctors will tell you, see six hours. It should be six, six hours. Then you see people timing themselves. Once it's 12, they take it. Once it's to 6, they take it. Once it's to 12, he say, Pastor, I'm not resting because I have to be doing this every 6 hours. But the word of God, when last did you train yourself? To say every 2-2 two, two hours, this is what I'll be quoting. This is what I'll keep saying until it's, it cuts deep into my heart. That's what the Bible says. Dear friends, listen well to my word. Tune your ears to my voice. Next verse. <laughs> Next verse. Keep my message in plain view. At all times. Concentrate. Learn it by where? So where should the word of God be? Learn it by the heart. 
So you can quote the word of God. You can hear the word of God. You can see the word of God until it has had a place in your heart. It will not profit you. And that's why you've seen people that have been in church for years and yet they have become an experiment in the hand of the devil. People can be in church for a long time and yet they, they have become an experiment in the hand of the devil. You know why? They can talk the word. They can see the word. They can hear the word. It has not settled in their heart. And so when I keep telling you, I can't be sick. I want it to sink in your heart so that it will be louder than the symptoms you feel in your body. Can I say that again? So that it will be louder than the symptom you feel in your body. I think I will do something before we do some other things. Psalm 103. Pastor, it's because you are a pastor. Psalm 103. Let's read verse 1 down to verse 3. Oh, keep it in King James, please. King James, please, watch this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, we sing this song a lot. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The melody helps you, it doesn't help God. I hope you know. Can I shock you again? The melody helps you, it doesn't help God. God is constant. If you like, sing, cry, until the word has cut deep into your heart, it does not change you. God is constant, I hope you know. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So the next verse began to explain the benefit. One, who forgiveth all. So what were the things that he was blessing the Lord for? Number one, his sins have been forgiven. Has our sins been forgiven? Now it was in the same token of the forgiveness of sin that healing came. The next word, who healed all die diseases. No one sickness escaped God's word. I speak over your body. No one sickness survives in that body. Because the Bible says, who healed all thy diseases. The same token of the forgiveness of sin is the same token that brought an end to sickness. Because sin gave room to the devil to operate and through the oppression of sin and the devil, sickness and death came. But if sin has been forgiven, then sickness has been cured too. Your body will not play host to any sickness. I want that amen to be resounding now. Because I need us to reason supernaturally. The challenge has always been, and hey, leave it, it's pastor. No, it's not about pastor. You can be a pastor and suffer for not knowing. It's so simple. My son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my sin. Let them not depart from your, from your eyes. That's, you keep visualizing it. Visualize yourself. I'm so healthy. Visualize yourself. Things are working for me. Visualize yourself. I'm getting out of the hospital. Visualize yourself. The doctor is no longer visiting me or concerning this matter. Visualize yourself. The drugs, I'm dropping the drugs. Visualize yourself. I'm no longer a slave to sickness. Visual. Let them not depart from your eyes. They keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to them. They are fineness. And health. Come on. I say, and health. I say, and health. Jesus saved you. Didn't save you with sickness. He saved you out of all of them. So you need to start reasoning supernaturally. And then when you start seeing symptoms of lack around you, look up. They are complaining. No money today. Things are hard. This thing I would have done, I wish I have money. When you start seeing those symptoms, they are symptoms of poverty. Double your confession of God's word. I cannot be poor. The lines fall to me in pleasant places. Money coming to me. Satan, take your hand off my finances. Ministering spirit, go forth. Cause them to come. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan, take your hand off my finances. Ministering spirit, go forth. Cause them to come forth. Am I communicating? Stop complaining about the situation. Reason supernatural. When you see things like that, double up your word confession. What did I say? Double up. Because the word confession is actually to confess in two places. In your mouth and in your heart. 
You confess them in two places. We've done that teaching in this church. You confess them in two places. Your heart and your mouth, they must say the same thing. Your mouth shouldn't be saying something and your heart is saying a different thing. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth should speak. So that's why I said, let the word cut deep into your heart. And that's part of why we come to church. We keep hearing God's word. As you hear this now, you are stirred up. True or false? As you hear this now, you are stirred up. No! I have relaxed for too long. I have given the devil a chance to have a free day in my life. There are certain things that can never happen to me. It's not possible. There are sicknesses I can never come down with. It's not possible. Do you know why? His word. I've kept them in the midst of my eyes. I've hidden them in my heart. I know what? The words I now speak, they are spirit and life. Recently, I was told there is an issue between Israel and their neighboring country. And there was a mix side, the true. And they had a counter mix side that went, swallowed it up. So the words you are speaking, every other mix that come, it will swallow them up. <laughs> Misiles that will detonate other missiles. As they release, uh, is it uh, Hezbollah? They release their missile from Israel. <laughs> it caught up with the missile up there and neutralized it. And that is what our words are. So we need to start business super supernaturally. Pastor, we don't know. Fulani hates men. Bandit, this is, this is. The Bible says you're going out and you're coming in. This is when the word of God should be so strong in your mouth. This is how we know those who have allowed the word of God in their ears, in their mouth. Those who have been giving attention to God's word, and from that attention, they have inclined their ears to it, then they have visualized it. From visualizing it, now it's now in their heart. It has entered deeply. The Bible says that same word is held to all their flesh. It's held to all their flesh. And I speak God's word to you. Something new is happening in your life. Say with me, if my sins have been forgiven, then I am healed of any disease. Yes, exactly. Exactly. The Bible talked of the man called Abraham. In the actual sense, he was talking about the new creation. He said, hope against hope. He staggered. He, he believed in hope. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith. What did he do? He was giving glory to God. The deadness of Sarah's womb did not do anything. Let's do something. Romans 4. Look at I just want us to read down. I've not taught you this before. Romans 4. Verse 18. Please, follow me. We want to, I want to read something that will make you laugh. Follow me. Who against hope, believe in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was... So what made this master? To stand strong, there was a word spoken. He held on to that word. He said, so shall thy seed be. Next verse. We are reading to the end. To the end. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now there. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Look at the next word. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. He was giving glory to God. The wife was aging and was asking, honey, how far? Look at. He said, no, forget that thing. What we are saying, there is a generation that we have the birth. Beyond Isaac is Christ. Let's continue. And being fully persuaded that what he had, there was something he was holding on to, had promised, he was able also to perform. So look at the word persuasion. That persuasion means the word has cut deep into the heart. Next verse. Next verse. Listen. And therefore it was imputed to him for what? Okay. Next verse. Now it was not written for his sake <laughs> that it was imputed to him. So it was not just written for his sake. Look at next verse. But for but for to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord. So all the story of Abraham was pointing you back to Christ. Oh, look at this. All the story of Abraham was pointing you back to Christ. That the same token, what we saw in Abraham. If we that are in Christ, everything was pointing to Christ. The same way when we hold on to God's word. And let the word of God. 
find a place in our ears and in our eyes and let it be in our heart deeply. God's word can keep you long as long as you want to live. That amen lies with our midday. I say as long as you want to hallelujah. Should, do we still have time? We don't have time any longer. So we will just call it a day for now because there is coffee and Sunday will continue. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you make some confession with me? Lord, I